We're dying here. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet left us this amazing trailer and then just left us hanging high and dry. So I say, let's make our own fun. That's right, I'm gonna be covering some super small, top secret details for you guys in this here video. I don't think anyone's covered these yet, so this will be a first for a lot of us to talk about. Let's go ahead and start covering what these are, and you guys can tell me what you think down in the comments as the video progresses. So the first oddball detail that I want to talk about has to do with the Pokemon League, or at least what we assume to be the Pokemon League anyway. <laughs> Attached to the building is a huge potted plant or a tree. There's kind of a rim around it, so I think it's a potted plant. Maybe this tree signifies something important, the force of life maybe, or the persistence among the gym challengers who participate in the gym challenge. It stands out a lot once you see it, so it almost has to have some sort of relevance. I'm very curious to see if they discuss this during the story. Next, I've talked about this giant cave entrance in a previous video, but if we rewind the clip a bit, we can actually catch a sneak peek at a complex building in the back. As far as we know, this clip is nowhere near the giant city we've been seeing so much of, and likely not near our starting home either. This seems to be our first sneak peek at another town we've yet to officially have showcased to us. It's likely the town that benefits either solely or just simply the most from this windmill energy. With the complexity of this building, we may be seeing a rather technologically advanced region in Scarlet and Violet. We already know they have solar panels and that huge city, so I mean, we could be seeing something really great here. One that also somehow coexists peacefully with nature. It really is a beautiful thing. Once we get closer to the windmill, I think we all got distracted by the winding stairs that we all want to walk up to enter the windmill itself. So much so that we missed this path in the back that leads directly into the mountain. Is this another cave entrance? Or maybe it just winds back down on the other side of the slope? Time will tell, but I for one am super glad we have so many places to traverse in this game. At least, it seems like that so far. In the desert scene, we can view a collapsed structure to the right of Stone Joiner. It looks kind of like part of a castle, or maybe a fortress. I wonder if these will have some sort of importance in the open world of Scarlet and Violet. Maybe we can climb or enter one or several. We still don't know just how varied traversal will be yet, but we're all hoping for the best. <laughs> now this is interesting. We catch a glimpse of a beach in this scene with Bound Suite. And if we look at the beach scene later on, the mountainscape in the background matches the previous shot. Is this beach literally just on the other side of this cliff? It's also worth noting real quick that, wow, there is a lot of elevation in this game and I love it. It definitely keeps things visually interesting and mysterious, and I can only hope that our traversal options are at least as good as they were in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, in the Blissey shot, we see another Pokemon Center. Just the little hologram symbol right above here. The crazy thing? With at least two Pokemon centers on the outskirts of the city, most likely four in total though, and two that we've seen so far inside the city, I think this tells us two things. One is that yes, we have a lot of Pokemon centers in this game. And two is that perhaps within the city, we'll be in quite a bit of scuffles. Whether this means solely trainer battles or maybe a mix of trainer battles and wild encounters, we don't know, but I'm hoping it's a mix for sure. If Blissey here is sleeping, perhaps they are a wild Pokemon. We also saw Pikachu and Psyduck just casually roaming around on their own, so maybe we can catch them here. Time will tell, and we're all hoping that we can catch them without entering battles just like in Legends. How cool would that be? But nevertheless, this is all super exciting. Another thing I want to talk about is the cave shot with Larvitar. I've talked about how happy I am that we're getting caves in a seamless overworld Pokemon title. But this cave does set a scary precedence for what we can expect. Yeah, it's literally a straight line in the shot. Let's hope it's actually just a small part of a large, complex layout. It's also interesting that the Larvitar are walking through the tunnel. I wonder if Pokemon have different walking patterns this time around. Like, maybe as we travel through this cave, Larvitar and some others will be trailing in one direction, just like we are similar to NPCs in Sword and Shield, and even some wild Pokemon like Karkoal in the Galar Mines, who ride the rail through with us. After all, in Sword and Shield, most of the wild Pokemon in caves gathered in the larger open areas rather than in the narrow tunnels, so this is all speculation. But 
We'll see. What do you guys think about all these details though? Tell me your thoughts down in the comments. And if you're as excited for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as I am, feel free to stick around the channel for more fun analysis videos to come. I always try to find the smallest details in these trailers so that we can all have new things to discuss. So if you love that, yeah, like I said, stick around. I've been Johnny, and until the next video, peace out.